And what these haters talking about And what these suckers talking about Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So, you know, people been, I've been posting a lot of like torta memes on my Instagram. I think they're funny. So somebody was like, bro, when are we going to get another one? So the other day, uh, when I was thinking about it, I was talking to my uh, BM about it, and it came up in my head, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this time. So we're going to take it back. We're going to take it back to 2003, 2004, right? Before, yeah, it was May or June of 2003, right? So I get out. I hooked up with some girl from Farmersville. A month later, she dies in a car wreck. Hooked up with a couple of other little skunk guys from the town, from Tulare. Then I hooked up with some chick that was like 19, 20, and I was hella young. So I was just on the run. I was on the streets running a mug. I was tweaked out. I was spun out my misery. Every time I'd go to that spot, man, we would get spadackled. Spun out, sconte activities, bro. I used to be bad and something like to the point like to the point my mom would go pick me up and be like, man, you've been gone for two weeks, ain't slept, you need to come home, at least get some rest, and I'd go sleep. Then I wake up and be like, where's the bowl? Like, man, who could pack a bowl? And then I would run straight back to this town. So to the west side actually. So I had been messing with this girl for like maybe three months, but we weren't like a thing. You know, I was 14, no, I was 15, gonna be 16, she was already 19, 20, so she was committing all type of felony acts, felony counts, every time we did something, it was a felony right there, she'd be in jail right now, we should be on a best documentaries on YouTube right now, but wait, she took advantage of me, she took advantage of me, I was young, and I was getting erections for no reason, so she would just take advantage of me, so that's on, that's on her, so I was doing my thing, I was having my fun, but there was this time, man, um, I had this homegirl she used to bring around a lot. I didn't really trip on her too much. She was a high, straight torta. And the only reason I call them tortas, bro, is because you guys call them tortas. I didn't know what a torta was. I walked out to this terminology. Back then, she was just thick girl. You know, she was a chunky mama. You know, it was just a... To me, it was a, a girl was a girl. I didn't, we didn't have terms back then for me. You know, she was, a, she was a hoe. She was a hoe. She was a ratchet. She was a ratchet. We didn't have torta. So this is your guys' fault. So she was built like one, but she wasn't no 300 plus mumbo jumbo type of woman she just didn't have the body the the perfect body so she had the belly she had two kids she had the belly she had a double neck whenever she would laugh it would just kind of like fold on top of her chin it was weird that was, it was gross but overall she was pretty when she got dressed up but when she got spun out dude man it was like staring at the grudge all day bro it was like, uh, she was just because her eyes would get that big and like for some reason her skin would just turn pale and she had dark, long hair, always let it down. She didn't take care of herself when she was spun out. She was just like, just out there. So, you know, the grudge. It was like having sex with the grudge. So, she had a dude who happened to be a homie from the town. And she was always at our spot. Always at our spot. So, I always chopped it up with her, but I never thought for a minute to to mess with her. Because when she did, her and her dude were fighting, is that's when she was right there. When her and her dude weren't fighting, you know, she'd come once in a while, smoke a bowl, go back. Go boss him up all night, give him hella face shots. But when they were fighting, she was over there. Where's the party at? Where's the party at, man? Call some of your homies, this and this and that. She's ready to get dogged out. And homies would dog walk that. It, it was, trust me, when there was a party and she was there, and even if we didn't know they were fighting, dude, somebody at that party was dogging it out. She would just magically disappear like Lucky Charms, bro, and then show back up, off the and just smelling like a cum bucket. And you're just like, ooh, sperm bank. Mm mm. Sperm bank, get out of here, get out of here. You didn't even, you didn't even use no wipes. You didn't take a whole bath. You didn't even take a bird bath. I'll show you how to take a bird bath. That's how she was, right? Now her name was Adriana. So this crazy tattoo, like from her pelvis up, like to her above, like right above her belly button. It was like a bunch of, it was like a bunch of roses and thorns, but the stretch marks and the fupa kind of stretched it out. That it didn't even look like, it didn't even look like a rose with thorns anymore. To be honest with you, it just looked like. Like somebody tatted a maze on her, a rat maze on her. That's what it looked like to me. It just, it just didn't stand out like that. One thing about her that was gross is that when she was spun out, she'd always it was always the same outfit, bro. Maybe a different pair of boxers, but she wore boxers like our boxers as men. But she'd have this black tank top on, and she had all these 1932 beat up tattoos that came out of San Quentin, and she ain't never been to prison. Just beat up, dude. Like names all slanted and. The tattoos just look so ugly. It just looks like it was just drip. It wasn't even a tattoo no more. And uh, she uh, she had a big stomach. 
To stretch marks, obviously went from the bottom to the top. Like she's been in multiple cat fights at the dog pound, whatever the hell, wherever they they store cats. So and these black tops, right? Because it'd be she's sweating and she's spun out, and then she'd always wear like boxers. But you know how the boxers in the front of the hole. You know we have a hole so we can pull out our PP and P. So. She'd be walking around in that all day. Now, mind you, that's sexy as hell when a girl walks around in your boxers, bro. The, the, the boxers just hugging the cakes. See, the, even the cakes, if she has cakes, it's hanging out from underneath the boxer. You're just like, ooh, damn. That's, that's sexy. But this one, no, because she didn't believe in using razors. So the fupa was just, just hairy, bro. And when I hit it, and I seen it, like, because... The boxer hole would open. Sometimes when she'd be walking right there, she'd have one hand on her hip, smoking a cigarette, talking to everybody in the room like she's doing a, a tech talk, a TED talk or something. And she'd be like, yeah, 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 all spun out. And there's a little boxer hole just like like that open. And you're just like, oh, my God, bro, it's hairy. You see like one or two pubic hairs just kind of going like this. Like, It was gross, fool, but nobody ever pointed it out to her. Not even her homegirls, not even the girl I was messing with. But like I said, the girl that I was messing with, she was also messing with some other dude when me and her were beefing. And then I'd be sleeping around with all my homegirls from the town or the homegirls from the west side because, you know, that's just a thing to do. But we didn't, we didn't beef like that. We didn't fight like that. So we just knew when we ended up at the same spot together, we mess around with each other. So that's pretty much what the basis of it was. And we just get tweaked out together, right? So this girl had walked in on me uh, handling homegirl. Handling business, boy, just handling me, man, just, just dang, bing, bing. So she walks in because she needed, I guess she had her laundry basket in the room, right? So, I, like, I stop in mid-motion, so my cheeks are, like, touching the ceiling, like. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it, just keep going, I just gotta grab my basket, woo, woo, woo. So I'm just stuck, and she's just, like, laying there with her legs just wide open, like TV antennas, and we're just looking at her. And then she's looking at us, like, keep going, keep going, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. And she bounces, right? So, there had been an occasions where uh, I've seen her doing, like, a, multiple stuff with, like, multiple people. I've walked in on her getting dogged out in the bathroom. I've walked in on her while she was in the shower giving somebody head. I've uh, walked in on her one time when she was with a girl. I've, so, I've seen her, like, get down, but, like, I didn't really care. I didn't really pay attention. She wasn't my thing, really, to be honest with you, because I knew my homies were dogging it out. My homeboy Troll, my homeboy Busy. Uh, I believe my homeboy, um, I think Giggler did it, too. I'm not too sure uh, who else, but I can't remember all off off the top of my head. But some homies from the west side, and the crazy part about it is a dude was a homie. It's just, it's like everybody knew. Oh, when they're fighting, bro, she's off. She's free game. She's free range right there, bro. But when they're together, hey man, respect the homies, old lady, bro. When they're on good terms, respect the homies, old lady. Weird, right? And I was doing it later on down the road anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So one night, bro, I'm spun, bro, and literally it was just like one of those dead nights. Every spot that I was going to, and I had maybe about maybe. Maybe half an eight ball of dope. So I wanted it just to get tweaked out in different spots. But I kept looking for a spot that was popping. But I would show up and there'd be like two or three tweakers. And they're watching TV. They're rebuilding cabinets. Or they're cleaning everything with cleaning supplies. They're just doing random stuff. And I'd be like, all right, fool, I'm out. Fool, I'm going to go. I got to go to my CMO lady, bro. I just wanted to get all high real quick before I go. She don't like that. And then I would bounce to the next tweaker spot. And the next tweaker spot, they're all just like that in the zone. Like, Nah, we're good, we're good. Just quiet, and I'd be like, yeah, this ain't the spot either. So now I just kept bouncing, and finally it was like, man, it was like 2 or 3 in the morning, and they had this broken down couch in the front of the of the porch, and I seen the light was on, and I was like, I'm not going in there, bro. I just sat on the couch outside, and I just, I'm just doing this, food for like 30 minutes, just staring at the street like, Thinking a car is going to bend this corner or it's going to turn that corner or this corner or that. So I'm just going, waiting for the next car. Just like, thinking that next car is going to be somebody that's important to me and I'm going to jump in that car and bounce out like they're going to come save me from a horrible night of tweaking, right? So I'm like, and then finally I see the curtain go open and I was like, oh, shoot. And they were like, fool, what are you doing? And I'm like, none, just getting some fresh air, fool. I want to go inside, fool, it's hot, fool. It's... And it was the summertime too, so I was just like, so they're all chopping it up with me, and I'm like, nah, bro, I'm just chilling. It happened to be the girl I was messing with, sister, and other homegirl. They had been in the house 
for hours because both their mans are out and about tweaked out and they're all tweaked out thinking that their mans are cheating on them and they know they're cheating on them and they're dogs and they ain't nothing and they got good women that they can come to they don't need to get it on the streets all that rah rah and foo foo and fa fa so i was like man whatever so i'm just like they're just listening to them and they're like yeah we'll come in fool. i know you got some i was like yeah i do i got some i pack a pipe food but i'm probably just gonna walk home after this and i'm just ain't nothing popping out here today so i go inside man I go inside and these girls are fully dressed up. It's summertime, dude. Summertime. And remember those denim outfits where it was like the pants and the denim jackets with the black shirt underneath or a red shirt underneath? They're both dressed like identical twins. So I look at them. I'm like, bro, I got a red t-shirt on that's like mesh a little bit. It's a Nike one with white shorts. I'm like, bro, it's hot, dude. Like, I'm hot and I'm wearing shorts. That's a whole denim outfit, bro. Like... What are you going to be part of a Jenna Jackson music video or something? This is, they were just dressed up to impress the night. And there is nothing going on that night. So they're just right there. And I'm telling you, fool, the pipe that they had was all burnt up. They were just trying to hit little stuff in there, but they had nothing in it. So I'm like, man, shoot it. Pack a pipe. Now we're blazing. Got them. I'm getting them all zoned out. And the sister, not the homegirl that I'm about to dog out, but the sister's like, yeah, have you seen them today? Like talking about her old man. And I'm like. Nah, I ain't seen that fool like in two, three days. Why? I haven't. I'm serious. And she'd be like, but she was looking out the window, right? She was moving the curtains. And she was like, but do you know if he's messing with anybody? And she'd go back out there to the curtain. And I'm like, I mean, I'm staring at her. I'm sitting at the end of the wall, but the, I'm facing the curtain now too, but towards her direction. I'm like, nah, you know, I'm, I don't know what he does on the streets. Usually the time when we're out, we're just like looking for Southerners. But I said the S word and uh, stuff like that. And I really don't see him with other chicks. And then she kept, like, looking out the window, so it kept making me like, well, what's out the window? And once that suggested in your head when you're all spadackled out, when you're all sconted out, I started scooting towards the window, like, man, I don't see what's going on out there. So now it's, she's like, it's like me and you talking, and she's right there. She's talking to me, asking about this fool, if I, like, trying to dig dirt out of this fool, and I'm responding to her with some small answers of avoidance, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I ain't seen that fool either. Nah, so what you guys up to tonight? And then she's on the other side like, no, nah, we ain't doing nothing, man. We're trying to find something to do. So you got two, me and her, just out the window like. And then homegirl's right there just like, let's go, let's, let's go, let's go check out, let's go to Jackie's, let's go to this. She kept throwing all these recommendations out. So finally, they came up to the conclusion like, you know, well, we can go to such and such. Her name was Brenda, some older white lady that I knew that my uncle used to hit. Let's go to her spot. It's like maybe five blocks from here. In the middle of the night, dude, at 3 in the Oh, my God, dude. Like, we used to do some stupid stuff. So, I was like, all right, they're going to go. I got them spun out off a bowl. They're going to go over there and find some other stuff to do. I'll probably just walk home from here. It's like a 20, 30-minute walk from my pad. So, they're like, all right, well, do you want to put anything on? And they look at me, and I was like, put anything on? They're like, yeah, get dressed. I'm like, I'm going with you guys? They were like, well, yeah, you got the sack. Come with us. There's going to be hell behind us over there. There's no bottles, bro. Just you, bro. So, you be you're cool. You get all the play you want. And I'm laughing like, yeah, that's going to sell me. And it sold me. So I got up. I was like, let me go change my shirt. So I went in, changed to a black t-shirt. My shorts were hella dirty. But they were dirty from the pockets from me putting my hands inside of my pockets. So bam, we go to Brenda's spot. I get stuck playing Xbox. They had a uh, Xbox right there. So I'm like playing 007. Like. And these girls, these hunters are on the table just chopping it up. They're having a, they're actually having a great time. They're, drink, they're taking a couple of shots. And then it's around like... I want to say six, six or seven. The sun's coming out. So they finally get me out of the zone for I'm like, like I'm 10, level 10 or something. Like, Hell yeah, man. All these little guns that I'm exchanging. And then they go, you ready to bounce? And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Where are we going? I'm spun, dude. They kept handing me the pipe and I would hit it like five times and give it back and just forget about it. Like, man. So they take me down. Uh, walked all the way from Roosevelt. We walked all the way down Los Angeles Street, down Roosevelt Street, all the way to her pad because it's a direct shop. Bro, it's bright, bro. And we just look greasy and slimy. That We look like we all stink. I'm just saying like that. We look like we just, just crawled out the sewer. So we're just like. And for my my dumb reason, because we're in the South Side area where the South Side is on it, I put a red rag on my face and I'm like. And when they asked me why I do that, I was like, because it's cold out here, man. The wind's blowing. But in reality, I was just like, man, I don't know if these fools going to catch me slipping. But that would have made it even worse. So I get to the spot. And homegirl's like, well, since my man ain't here, I guess I'll just go in the room and play with myself. Y'all can do whatever y'all want. 
And she just shuts the door. And I'm like, so she made it hella awkward because she just said that out of nowhere. So I'm looking at, oh, girl, we're standing in the hallway, like, by her door, like, um, hmm, what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? I'm probably going to bounce. What are you going to do? Well, what do you want to do? We don't, we don't got to, we don't, you don't got to leave. You know, it's all right. I, mean, I know you. I know who you are. She's doing that kind of thing. And I'm like, wanting me to stay. And I'm like, wanting to go. And I was like, well, was, I mean, I still got a little bit more dope. But once that's done, what what is there going to do? Like, there's nothing to do. It's, it's the morning. Ain't nobody out. Everybody's probably crashing and coming down right now. So we're all sitting on the couch right there. What does this chick do? She, I, I swear, whatever they had on that TV, like illegal cable boxes or whatever the hell it was that they had that TV. Pretty much, she just threw on porn. That's all she did. She threw on porn, and she's just like, and she just crosses her legs and was just watching it, fool, watching it. And I'm kind of like, Phew. like I don't want to see that. And I just get stuck, fool. Like, man, that fool's pounding that stuff. But see me, I like I said, I'm not the type that I get all spadackled out and get just boom, boom, boom. You gotta touch me, kiss me, give me a hickey or something. You know, I'm just rub my back, tell me I'm beautiful. I don't care, something like that. So. She's just, I can just tell she's getting just all nipples hard and mojada and just nasty with it. And I'm like, hey, man, like, I ain't really ain't into watching porn, but if we can just do, do the real deal. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to watch this stuff. I'd rather be doing it than watching it. That's gross. I just said that to her. And she's like, yeah, I'm down. Oh, hell yeah, I'm down. Cool. Bam. Take her to the same girl that I was messing with. I took her to her room. I don't know where she was at. Risky business. We could have got caught. It would have been just a hell a storm, a hell storm. So we go in there, get all nasty with it. We're kissing each other. We could taste each other's morning breath. Our salivas are real dry, so our lips are sticking to each other. Our tongues and our hot breath just blowing at each other. Straight dragging morning breath, just like it was just gross, fool. But we getting all into it. She's moaning as I'm kissing her, hugging her hips. Then bam, I just start taking off my clothes. We're like I was getting hot, hot. And I laid in bed. I'm butt naked and she's still fully dressed in her denim outfit. So she starts taking it off. Boom, 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 boom. Bro, she gets down to the same thing, man. The same thing. A bra and those, those boxers. So now I see her body fully naked. I only had seen just a little, a little bits when I wish she would walk around the house. But now I see her fully naked. And I'm just like, man. So she takes off her, but the boxers, right? They were uh, baby blue boxers. She takes them off and oh my God, dude. Like I knew it was hairy. But it was like Austin Powers Harry, bro. Like his lower back Harry, like bushy. Like I like like weed eater bushy. Like you got yeah, you gotta trim it. I'm like, bro, you're tweaked out, bro. Like you ain't got nothing to do. You ain't got to just and hit it with it, bick it real quick or moisturize it or I don't know what you do. Just light it on fire and then blow it out so it can just disappear. I don't know, bro. You you have plenty of time because you're up. And there's many things that you want to do because the way your mind's running right now. Is, you could have shaved that for a long time. If you're tweaked out, bro, you should be able to maintain a bald head kitty. That's all I'm saying. If you're tweaked out, if you got that much time. So she did it. So obviously, hygiene wasn't her priority. So I'm not thinking much of it other than she's half woman, half arachnophobia. Because that thing was just from the front to the back. To the back. 1970 porn to the back. So I'm like, whatever. So that's all good. This is how hard it was, bro. Like, I was, like, trying to shove it in. And it's like, I had to go through layers. And I'm just, like, you know, trying to find a hole. So she had to grab it, find a hole for me. I'm, that's how hairy it was, bro. So, bam, we do our thing. Bro, it's like rug burn after rug burn. She's on top. She's screaming, dude. She's screaming. And I'm just like, dude, I'm so spun out, bro. It's like, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. Because I just can't believe it. I'm like dumbfounded that this is going on. I'm panicking. I'm paranoid. But I want to look out the window like so bad, bro. <laughs> so bad. I just There's a window right there. I just want to. Like those, that feeling when you're all tweaked out is so satisfying when you go. Then you go back to it. Like that, right? So she's riding me. Boom, boom. We finish. She lays down. And we're just, we're just like laying down like. But I could not get over the fact that that bush was so hairy, hairy, hairy. And then, cause I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to go another round. What do I do? I decide to jump head first and eat it. I just jumped face first into Rick James's hairdo right there, just right there. Just so I'm just like, bro, like the whole time I was doing it, I just kept doing like, 
Now, mind you, this is the first time that I found out what a queef was. I never knew what a queef was because the, there was a time that happened of with the girl that I was messing with. I thought I farted. And she looked at me like she was embarrassed. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure what's going on. I found out later what a queef was. I didn't know. At the age of 15, I didn't know what a queef was. So, bam, I get up. So, we start doing it again. So, you hear the mac and cheese motion, the mac and cheese sound effects. That stuff. And then, whew, whew, I didn't know what that was at all, whatsoever. And it was freaking me out. So, I, kept, I would go again, mac and cheese, and then a flat air tire. I was like, man, what the? I, I, I didn't know she was loose, or I don't know. I don't know how creeps work. I just to this day, I really do. I just know what it is. Is, is in the butthole farts and then the other part farts. That's all I know. Sorry that I'm very uneducated and I didn't take sex ed classes. I went to YA. So she, it was just mac and cheese and queef, mac and cheese and queef, mac and cheese and queef. Cold, cold combination, cold recipe for a sex session. Then bam, we finish again, bro. And for some reason, I was sitting there. And it's rare, bro. When you hook up with a woman and you, and you know, your thighs and her thighs are dripping and it's sticky, but it smells good. It smells like sex in there, bro. It's a very, you know, beautiful fragrance, right? After this one, I was like, bro, this just stinks, bro. It just smelled like it smelled like somebody left a diaper and like in the corner of the wall or something or in the, like in a trash can. And it was just been there for a while. And you're, it's like slowly just starting to smell rotten and, and moldy or whatever, whatever the smell, however you describe it. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, talking to her and she's talking to me. And she's like on her back, arachnophobia just out in the air, just airing it out. And I'm just like, stinks, bro. Gross, dude. Like, ugh. So finally after the pipe was done, I was like, hey, I'm going to go take a shower. She goes, I'll come with you. And I'm like... I was like, now, nah, so I got to give your pet a bath now, too? That's gross, man. That's gross, man. Take it to a groomer first. So we go in the shower, and uh, she's a bigger girl. She's thicker, and I was skinny at the time. I was like 120 pounds. We didn't really fit in the shower. So we're just fighting over water, her water splashing off her body onto my body. And then she's like, she just out of nowhere, fool. Like, I was telling you, fool, and her hair got wet, and it got wavy, and her eyes were, like, wide, and her skin turned pale. She turned around, like, the grudge again, and she's like, just go again. I'm just like, oh, God, this is gross, dude. So I threw up against the wall, couldn't get it up. Bent her over, couldn't get it up. She did all kinds of stuff with her mouth and her hands, couldn't get it up. And, dude, it, it just looked like a jelly bean down there. I was like, man, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I gave you two in the, in the room. Now you just hit me with some cold water. I usually shower with hot water, not even lukewarm water. You gave me cold water and just froze him. So now he's all tucked away in his little tent. So I don't know what to tell you. And she's getting frustrated, bro. Like to the point, like she's like ripping skin off, like trying to get it up. I'm like, like oh, and I was like, like, you're not even turning me on now. And I was just starting to hurt. She's doing everything imaginable. The the the, the gooch pocket, the, the back of the scroll, everything. And she's not, it's not working. So finally I was like, hey, fool, just, I just need her in there smoking another bowl, bro. Let, when we come out, we'll finish again. So she finishes in the shower. And, oh, dude, this is the grossest part of this story. But, I mean, it was fun times, though. I ain't going to lie to you. So I go in the room. I get dressed first. And, like, I could just, I was, there was a moment where I was standing there and I was feeling my ribs. I was like, man, did I get for my ribs? Like, I felt like I was doing this. And I was holding my breath. That's how sucked up I was getting. And uh, I got dressed. And I just put on some shorts, some regular shorts. And I was walking around barefooted. And then she comes out, full, like, no shame in her game. Down the hallway, just with her hair wrapped up in a towel. Arachnophobia right there, just right in front of me, bro. Austin Powers between her legs. Just walks in. She was like, you think you can do it or no? Nah, you just want to go just wanna smoke? And I just looked at it, and it grossed me out. I seen the stretch marks. I seen the arachnophobia. Her little spider monkey that she had right there was just out in the open, just in the air. It didn't turn me on no more. So I was like, nah, I just want to smoke a bowl, fool. Actually, I just want to go home, fool. I'm just like, sound like a sucker when I said that, too. I was like, I just want to go home, man. I'm like, I'm tired of this night, bro. This night has been long and hectic. I got bunions now from walking 32 miles. Like, I'm done for the night. So she gets dressed, puts on the tank top and the boxers, walks around with that little boxer hole, and pubic hair is peeking out. And then we sat in the living room. We smoked, and I, <laughs> the way the morning ended was... We're smoking, and I'm about ready to get, I'm about ready to leave, right? I'm, I'm like, the bowl's almost done. That's all I'm waiting on so I could just get up and bounce, right? And the, the girl I was messing with, her sister, just comes out like a demon out of hell. 
just dripping sweat, makeup smeared. Like it looked like she was crying, but she wasn't crying. And she just comes out and I just remember her go. <sighs> so we kind of were just stuck on her and like, well, what's up? What's the matter with you? The whole time we were messing around in the shower, smoking a bowl, she had just been nonstop messing with herself because her old man was gone. So she just sat on the couch, felt relaxed. And now this girl's in her boxers and a tank top. And homegirl's in her boxers and a tank top. And I, and the other one, the sister, I know her because I've, I've been seeing her naked. I didn't want to see two arachnophobias. I didn't want to see two tarantulas just crawling on some thighs. And I didn't want to see that no more. And they're just both in boxers like, <sighs> both satisfied with life. And I'm like, yeah, but both your mans are cheating on you right now. And I know all the details. I just didn't want to tell y'all all night. Even though you guys try to interrogate me and do the unthinkable movie scene on me. Nope, it didn't work. So finally I got up and I just shook her hand like a dude. And kind of I just messed with it. I just shook her hand like a dude. Like, all right, fool. Good looking out, homie. All right, home girlfriend. I'm going to catch up, man. I mean, you guys have fun. And then I was about to walk out the door. They were like, well, at least can you fill up the pipe and leave it? And I'm like, gosh, I fill up the pipe, leave it. I had a little sack left. I was like, I'll just smoke that when I wake up, when I go home. And I walked all the way home smelling that same old rotten diaper smell, like, from my waist to my stomach to my pants. And because the wind's blowing out my nose, I'm like, man, I stink, bro. I really stink. Went home, threw those clothes away, showered. And the moment I hit the bed for, I just went, crash. Crash for three days. So, yeah, that. So that's the story of the homegirl, a.k.a. Tarantula, the homegirl, Adriana. Cool homegirl, I haven't heard from her since, uh, cause everybody was saying that the girl that I was messing with at the time, uh, they said I got her pregnant because they said as soon as I got locked up, she had a kid, but nobody told me anything, and I actually talked to the sister, and said, like, nah, that's not your kid, so I never heard from this crew again, really, only just the sister, so, hope, I hope I made you guys this, uh, afternoon with a torta tail, now I gotta go back to this content, but with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance, we only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done, peace.